Hello everyone, I am Tina and I make YouTube videos, but today I'm going to try Twitch because I think that the visual novel format is probably a little bit better for a stream than it is for a um, YouTube video, especially considering I make mine kind of short because they're intended to be review videos. I figured it would be better if I just played this on stream for a while. Um, I have played the demo, so this is a, a game that my friend recommended to me a while back. I got the demo on Steam, played through it, and I was like, eh, I have a lot of other games I want to play right now, I don't know if I'll buy this one right now. Then I got the big Itch.io bundle thingy that was a little while back for $5 or whatever, and this game was in it, so I was like, hey. This will be really good. I can actually play it, and um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Um, looks like the stream is going well. I've never done this before, so I'm like trying to monitor it and make sure that I'm not dropping a bunch of frames and stuff. It was really bad a minute ago, but that was because I was trying to upload a video to YouTube at the same time, and don't do that. So <laughs> I'm gonna get started. I know a little bit about the premise of the game, but not a whole lot. Database system online. New profile detected. Analyzing. Analyzing. New profile 2377771. Economic bracket lower middle. Employment category bleak. <laughs> Current emotional health rating low. Mm. <laughs> Ideal candidate for premium level assistance. Proceed. Negative. Premium level assistance re-requested. Proceed. Negative. Pretty please? Negative. Overriding denial of assistance. Establishing premium services for profile 237771. Justification. Hope. Hope should be rewarded. Spirit must be restored. Now compiling personal metadata. Ah, you get to make yourself in this game. Alright, I'm gonna change your name. Uh, yeah, that's a good name, Tina Cat. Uh, what pronoun should we use? Let's stick with she. My hair short, so we'll do short. Let's see, what do I look like? Hmm, that seems a little light. Yeah, I think I'm probably a lot like that. Let's see. What color is my hair? Mm, it's lighter than that. I think it's like this color. Maybe it's more this color? Yeah, I think maybe it's more this color. This is not that important. I don't know why I'm like having to determine exactly what hair color I am. I have blue eyes. Yeah. Ooh. What should we wear? I like that color. Yeah, I think that one's good. Done editing. There we go. Name, Tina Cat. Pronoun, she. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Premium level assistance for profile 237771. Tina Cat has been activated for the sake of her hopes and dreams. <laughs> I don't know what this means, but we're in some sort of futuristic realm. The following is a work of fiction. All references to trademark classic arcade game titles are used under the no nominative fair use and should not be considered endorsement and something else, but that's fine. Alright. This is basically just the intro. Level 1. Put your quarter up. I don't know that much about classic arcade stuff, but I think when you put your quarter up, you're saying you want to go next. I think. It is the future year 2020. A dark era in which mankind is pushed to the brink of catastrophe. Oh shit, I should have chosen 2020. That's so topical, though. Woe be to the human race, plagued by evil, terrifying, utterly sinister. Yikes. Uh, I don't know. Robots, maybe? Evil robots? How's that work? 
Yeah, no, sorry. The future year 2020 is pretty much what you'd expect it to be. Non-flying cars, smartphones, pro gamer celebs, internet trolls, personal assistant AI, cheese-flavored snack foods. But even with such wonders as 2020 holds, to date, I've had no part in any of them. I've worked as a dishwasher, a shoe salesperson, a lifeguard for the local community pool. I don't care what era of human history you live in, kitties peeing in the pool is pretty much a constant thing. Trust me on this. As for the bustling metropolis of 24-hour neon utopia you see here, my little corner of it isn't nearly as shiny and cool. Let me show you. Oh, This is about what my apartment looks like. <laughs> Behold my quaint little apartment. Can't complain, really. It's paradise, in a relative sense. I only pay half the rent. Neighborhood stabbings have been down this year. Also, my roommate picks up any stray socks or shirts I leave lying around. In fact, as things go, I'm living large compared to most in my family tree. Or at least I was, for you today. You fired from another job? It's loud. Seriously? Seriously? That's three jobs since we left the suburbs. Uh-oh. The horrifying looking young woman there would be my roommate and childhood friend, Juniper. Juniper's the only- Juniper's the one who spearheaded this effort to co-rent an apartment. She's also the one who encourages me whenever I lose a job. Like, you know, today. I don't get why you aren't more upset about this. I'm upset! I'm upset on your behalf! Come on, share the load a little, okay? That's cool, it's like actually like fully... voice acted for- at least for this character so far. That's really- that's neat. I was not expecting that. I expected to have to read them, so. Pool's closed, Juniper. Not much I can do about it. Why get upset? Oh, I guess not. <laughs> because you actually enjoyed that job? More than you enjoyed dishwashing soap and smelly socks at the very least. I'm not the complaining sort. These things just happen. Things fall apart. The center does not hold. That's a bit morbidly poetic, isn't it? No, I mean, the community center literally fell apart and the pool won't hold water anymore. Whatever, I'll just get another job. Any job will do, as long as we can make the rent, right? Wrong! I saw how mopey and tired you were, coming home every night from those other crappy jobs. At least when you got back from the pool each day, I, got, I sometimes caught you smiling. What's the point of us moving away from home, if not to get away from all of... all of that? I actually... Y'all, I think I actually almost nailed her voice perfectly, so pretty proud of that. I mean, we both left that town so we could try to find happiness, right? I just want us to be happy. Both of us. That's nice. I thought you hated your job. Come on! No deflecting. This is about you. My mind's made up. We're going to find you a job that's just as good, if not better, than the lifeguarding job. Let's start from the top. What's your dream? Well, I'm standing in front of class to give a speech, and I forgot to put on my pants, and... Okay, real talk, has anyone ever actually had that dream? I think that's just, like, you know, like, collective unconscious since they started making, uh, high school movies in the 80s. That's the, the joke, but I don't think anyone in their entire life has actually had this dream. Your dream job. Oh. I don't know, Juniper. I've never really given it any serious thought. I've got it! Oh, hey! I think I've got just the thing to help you out. Juniper pulls out her phone, rapidly tapping an unlock code onto the glass before pointing out a little pink icon. It's a virtual life coach app. Mine keeps me from being late to meetings. Totally free, too. My cousin introduced it to me. Wasn't he the guy who ended up in the ER after making a homemade flamethrower? It would have worked if he got the fuel mixture in his water gun right. Anyway, I'm sending a copy to you now. I got a pop-up an hour ago offering me 500 points just for recommending it to a friend. Great timing, huh? Well, as long as you're earning points, I guess. At least give it a try, okay? Maybe it can point you at some jobs. Ones with less socks and or urine. Eh, I'll think about it. Okay, okay, but don't think about... Uh, but don't think too long, right? In the end, I installed the app. Couldn't bear to see Juniper fretting over me like that. Not that I find it annoying. I mean, it's more that she has enough trouble in her life without troubling herself over my life, too. Both of us had it rough, up to and through the point where we left home and to try and start a new life. A better one. She deserves better than me and my problems. 
This is sad. Bless her heart, she means well. She's been firmly in my corner for all my life, the two of us, against any dark forces aligning against me. But that's not to say she's good at being my advocate. Enthusiastic? Yes. But skilled? No. Typically, the fantastic opportunities and self-help resources that she sends my way are pyramid schemes or something. She's gung-ho about lending me a healthy hand, but yeah. So, the main reason I went ahead and installed the app was to make sure Juniper wasn't about to get her kidneys sold on the black market or something. Still, no sense messing around with it now. A good night's rest would act as a neat little emotional reset button, right? Right. No dreams, no nightmares, just eight hours of sweet, sweet black. By the time morning light leaked in through the creek, cracks in the blinds, I didn't care anymore about being unemployed again. Juniper had already left to catch the bus to our office. She typically leaves before dawn, but she left a note for me pinned to the tiny fridge we shared. Remember, download app, find dream job, make money, sort your life out. I believe in you. So, moment of truth. Do I trust in Juniper's weird little app or just go find some job that pays well enough to cover the bills? Give the weird little app a shot. Figuring at the very least her miracle app could possibly help me find a job, I load it up, tap the icon, and... Hello! Hello! Huh? Okay, see, that's what I mean. Anybody else would freak out over a cute girl climbing under their phone. Me? I went, huh? Also, it's one of these new kind of 3D screens, so, you know, not actually magical realism here. Very normal in the, very dis in the distant future year of 2020. I think it's funny if I keep saying 2020 because... It's, I don't know. It's funny to me, at least. Thank like, you for downloading Iris, your personal life coach. I like this girl's voice. This is the ad-supported free version. Sponsored by Pizza Yums. Pizza Yums? Did you know that when you have pizza on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime? What? What does that mean? Wow. Would you like to subscribe to Pizza Facts? Heck yeah. Thank you for subscribing to Pizza Facts. I'm here to help you get your dream job, your dream house, and your dream partner. I'm here to make all your dreams come true. Pretty tall order for an app to do, or are you some sort of wish-granting genie? Hmm. Well, I suppose in the modern parlance, a massively interconnected database searching virtual assistant could be considered a kind of genie in a bottle, but honestly, all I can do is give you the chance to improve your life. What you do with it is up to you. I can cross-reference search data for you, but without motivation, you won't get anywhere. I glanced up from my phone at the heaps of laundry and half-finished books and other items strewn about my apartment. Motivation is something I have a ton of. Honest. Hooray! That's super. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Before we begin, do you have any questions? Sure. Why should I use this app at all? I mean, my phone already has had a voice-activated assistant AI. I can just say, hey phone, search the web for job listings, and it worked just as well. Ah, but I have an advanced emotional language interpreter. I'm smarter than the average program with more heart. I can help you sort out or sort your life out by analyzing your personality and finding you a perfect path in life. All thanks to my glorious, wondrous, patent pending, super duper. Identity Identifier System. Between you and me, they really, really wanted an acronym that matched my name, but couldn't figure out what to do with the letter R. Would you like to know more? Yeah, let's do the tutorial. Might as well. Every time you think about saying something, I can tag it with an identity. That way you can be the sort of person you want to be. This system allows me to better understand who you are and what you need from life. I do this by analyzing your tone, inflection, and word choice. I can spot five different identity identifiers in your responses to people. Quirky, steady, kindly, gutsy, and basically. Sounds to me like your program programmers also wanted a bunch of things that ended in Y. Oh. I didn't mean to do that. I guess the middle mouse? Yeah, middle mouse. Alright. 
That's correct. My branding game is on point. Quirky responses use jokes, snark, and sarcasm to make light of a situation. Just the thing for picking up someone's spirits, but a badly timed joke may not win over the room. The noise that made. Steady responses are sincere, honest, and logical. When you stop and think before speaking, you're on steady ground. But that might not take someone's feelings into an account or into account. Kindly responses are compassionate and empathetic and gentle in nature. They're careful with the feelings of others, but they're sometimes a bit wishy-washy as a result. Gutsy responses go with your gut. When you're brash, bold, risk-taking, and instinctive, you're gutsy. Uh, but it also means being blunt, confrontational, and aggressive, so be careful. Lastly, you can always take a basically option. It's a balanced and neutral response, safely moving the conversation along while learning more and digging deeper. Over time, I'll build up a personality profile for you based on the identity identifiers detected in your speech. Maybe you'll be predominantly quirky, genuinely steady, a mix of both. Who knows? It's up to you. So what you're saying is I should always try to crack jokes or be super gutsy? Oh, and never speak basically. I mean, being basic's bad, right? It sounds bad. No, that's not at all what she said. Nope. Heck no. They're all useful in the right context. There are no bad choices. Consider what you could say and go with what feels right in the moment. Don't limit yourself. Sure, you could gamify your personality, but it's more fun to let it happen naturally, you know? Just be you. Now, let's see my patent pending identity identifier system in action. How do you feel about dad jokes? I think this is the best one. Hi jokes, I'm dad. <laughs> uh seriously? Seriously? Hey, I never said I was good at dad jokes, just that I could go for them. So, now that you've seen the identity in the blip bit. So, now that you've seen the identity indicators in action, do you want to see the indicators like that so you can make an informed decision? If not, I can hide the indicators. Keep it a surprise. That way, it doesn't influence your decision making. It's up to you. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like, okay. I mean, I feel like the indicators are probably going to be obvious enough that you'll always be able to tell, like, which option is which. Let's hide them. We're gonna we're gonna be ballsy. So mysterious. Okay, I'll hide them from you. You'll always be able to spot basically responses though. Anyway, as we go along, I'll analyze and tally your identity identifiers. In fact, let me show you now. Good work. Oh wow, look. My score is 100. Will you look at that? Such a strong personality. You asked me a single question. Off to a great start, I'd say. And hang on, you're scoring me? Didn't you say not to gamify my personality? Hey, I said you shouldn't. I'm an app. I think in numbers, so I gotta gamify it a little bit. Anyway, studies show that achievements, or chivos as the kids say, encourage app engagement. Okay, well, what's with the empty space on the left? Oh, I also track vocal responses from people you meet. Once you get to know some folks, I'll let you know how well you're getting along with them over there. Relationship scores. Wonderful. So will you also tell me what the correct responses are to avoid making enemies, or do I need to go find a, a walkthrough for the fast game you're making of my daily life? Uh... Tina? Tina! You're looking at this the wrong way. Generally, people won't get super annoyed at you unless you deliberately and repeatedly provoke them. And it'll be obvious when you're doing that. I promise you that if you bungle a few social encounters, it won't really hurt anything. 
No cheating needed. Just relax and have fun. That's good to know. I always... Okay. My friend's always get, trying to get me to play visual novels. And, like, this is going to sound insane. Because they're intended to be, like, ah, like, fun games that you just, like, read through the story and, like, you get to play, like, your own life. I'm always so paranoid that I'm going to pick the wrong things and have to, like, backtrack to get the right thing and like I know that's not really how they're supposed to be played but like I am obsessed with that so it's kind of good to know that like no matter what you do they won't hate you <laughs> you can access your scorecard anytime you like with the Q key or click on the score in the upper right corner of your screen and that's everything ta-da okay but how is any of that supposed to help give me a job hmm? Hmm? I only downloaded this app because my roomie claims you're a great life coach for the unemployed. What good will taking the quiz off the back of a supermarket checkout rack magazine do with that? Why, it'll help me understand your spirit, of course. You can talk to ghosts? Is there a ghost in the room right now? Am I a ghost? You have to tell me if I'm a ghost, that's the rule. No, silly. I mean your spirit. Your hopes and dreams. Your life's passions. I can even help you find romance. Romance? Seriously? Seriously. Often you can find your soulmate and your dream job in the same place. But if you'd rather focus on gainful employment for now, that's fine too. Workplace dating. Well, that's a recipe for disaster. And hitting on coworkers right from day one can be kind of awkward. Or am I looking for love and ready to start out, start right out of the gate? Never get a second chance to make a first impression. If I meet the right person, why put it off? How do I want to handle this new opportunity? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which one's, like, a better idea. I wonder if it's almost just kind of, like, how you feel about romance in general. Like, if you want a romance, um, but you don't want to be too forward. Um, well, I don't really know anything about any of the, like, characters, so I probably won't really flirt with anyone at the beginning anyway. So why don't we go with this? Right now I'd rather focus on finding a career. Any sweet loving can come later if I feel like it. That's fine. I'm sure as you get to know people better, romance will eventually bloom. Or not. It's up to you, really. Now, let's get started. To finish analyzing your personal history, please authorize me to read your social media feeds and personal information metadata. Aha! I knew it! This is some kind of scam. I'm gonna wake up in a bathtub of ice missing a kidney. Sure, I can help you register as an organ donor. Bad command or file name? Oh, you are being sarcastic. Sorry, I haven't quite finished analyzing your personality. I couldn't tell. Relax. I won't share your information with any third parties. This is strictly so I can find your dream job. Am I authorized? Another wonderful Juniper recommendation here, just like the 17 self-help bo self -help books on my shelf. Still, 18th time's the charm, right? Yeah, go ahead. Please enjoy this recorded music. Analyzing, analyzing. Please enjoy this recorded music. I love this little cursor thing. So, do I just stand here, or... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for waiting. I've identified your dream job and arranged for an interview. 30 minutes from now. Please, put on some nice clothes. Nicer than those. Please. I don't think that's too you much know, to ask. 30 minutes... What? For your interview, silly. You want to look your best. But we just... How? Okay, 
how did you land my dream job in 20 seconds flat? Simple. I'm awesome like that. Now, get a move on. Tut tut. You need to catch the 8.20 a.m. bus, and that's nine minutes away. Let's see again. Well, this is happening, but I do have a chance to get off this runaway train. Nobody says I have to obey my, do my new digital fairy godmother. I could delete the app and go find a real job. That'd be the safest option. I could... Yeah, get dressed for Iris's job interview. A normal person, someone with high standards, would have deleted the app right there rather than hop a bus to meet up with what they were very like with what were very likely men with sharp knives and a taste for kidneys. But me, I was already getting dressed before she'd finished that sentence. It's not that I believe the silly abs claims that serving my hopes and dreams on a silver platter. Honestly, I'd expected another shoot salesman job at best. But well, Let's see. It'll be worth a laugh at the very least. Okay, this is obviously completely ridiculous. A personality quizzing app is going to solve all my life's problems. Yeah, and I'm a Nigerian prince with a million bucks. But it satisfied Juniper's whims whimsy to see this through, and when it crashes and burns, it'll make for an amusing story to tell people. I resolved myself to accept inevitable disappointments, smile in the face of my usual fate, and look for jobs in the paper later tomorrow. And as I came to realize weeks later, the amazing story I'd be telling people wasn't to be one of failure. How exciting we're gonna get this job. The bus drops me off, oddly enough, not very far from Juniper's office building, although my destination isn't nearly as upscale as that. This is, well, it's a strip mall. Strip malls are relics of 1995. That's what I'm going with. Places where a random assortment of little weird little businesses jam as many of themselves into a type of a space as possible. For instance, I'm seeing a dentist, a used bookstore called The Whole Story, an arcade, a fast food joint, and a boarded up health spa, once called Lattes and Enemas, which sounds... uh... Hey! Listen! What do you think? I think that's two things no human being should ever combine. No, I mean about your future place of work. I'm desperately hoping we're not talking about the same thing. Which one of these businesses exactly am I working at? I don't know anything about oral hygiene or old books, and I'd rather not be a fry cook. The one in the middle, silly. What, behind the arcade? It is the arcade. Huh. Trust me on this. I reference and cross-reference and cross-cross-reference your personality details, personal history, and social media connections. This is your dream job. My dream job. Really? 99.97%. I should probably explain my confusion. Arcades are big businesses in the entertainment sector, pro gamers are celebs, five star arcades are social hotspots, and it's always been a popular with the mainstream. But, well, restaurants are popular too, right? And for everybody who opens one hoping to be the next Iron Chef, a dozen more shut down in failure. Arcade competition is fierce. Paydays range from peanuts to gold, and sure, those who make it can secure fame and fortune, but those who don't, well, no wonder Iris sees this as a dream job. What is this? Video games weren't always this popular, though. I read an interesting article about it once, back in the year 1985. We narrowly avoided a serious industry crash, which would have left video games as a kid's toy fad, like hula hoops. No mainstream acceptance. For instance, one of the factors could have been a terrible game based on a kid's movie about a cute alien visitor who wanted to phone home. Are they talking about that weird E.T. game? I literally don't know anything about the weird E.T. game, other than that it's weird and, like, there's some, like, weird conspiracy or, like, cult around it. I don't know. 
If this game was a com complete poop butts, like poop from a butt and massively overproduced, it ruined video games for years. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed and that game was delayed until it could be developed properly and the crash was averted. The crisis only exists in theory now. Sometimes I wonder what it'd be like for people in the darkest timeline where everything went wrong. Are gamers considered nerds and outcasts? Are arcades vanishing points of nostalgia? The mind boggles. Wow. But make no mistake, as popular as they are, the arcade industry is a dodgy, risky prospect for a job. Plenty make a run at it, only to come up short. Considering Iris was tasked with getting me a job I'd enjoy and could keep for more than a few months, this left me a bit confused. Iris... This isn't me saying no. It's an interesting prospect, but... I mean, are you sure about this? You say you're 99% sure? 99.97% Won't this be like my lifeguard job, though? Satisfying but short-lived? This arcade doesn't exactly look like a 5-star. It's no Deco's Palace, that's for sure. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't set foot inside an arcade in a... Oh. You get a sick backstory flashback. 15 years? Huh. I remember really enjoying arcades when I was a kid. I wonder why I stopped going to them. Iris interrupts that thought, eager to show off her homework. My sources say yes. Trust me. When I said I was 99.97% sure, I meant it. That's not some arbitrary number. I'm designed to be a bit silly and whimsical, but my math is deadly serious. My coders made me that to be that warm, personable front of a database array that's currently laser-targeted on getting you exactly what you need. Right here, right now. And when this place inevitably collapses and I lose my dream job, what makes you think that's going to happen? Because it does. It always does. I don't think your database accounts for my family curse. We've always had to, I don't know, compromise? Settle, because things rarely work out? You always have to be ready for the worst. That's why I take things in stride these days. Does that mean you shouldn't even try? I open my mouth to protest, and then close it. As often as my life tends to crumble out from under me, it's not like she was wrong. I still had to try. But... This was a joke, right? I mean, I'd assumed it was all a joke when I left the house this morning. I figured I'd have a wacky experience, fail miserably, and then get back to my not-so-funny tragic life story by lunchtime. And yet there was something to this, wasn't there? Something I couldn't quite laugh off so easily. So I opted to push on through those doors and see what waited for me on the other side. One second. I have to turn on the um, the little boxes for my chat and stream information because I just realized I don't have them open. There we go. All right. The air conditioning hits me like a cool breeze. I'll be at one smelling of copper and corn chips. As it's early in the morning on a weekday, it's not too packed with gamers, although. It's so packed with games, I'd probably have a hard time finding anyone anyway. At once, I'm struck by something odd. I actually recognize most of these games. Neat! Considering I haven't walked into an arcade in over a decade, that's probably not great. Lots of vintage stuff here, from the looks of it. Like, really old. Although, I don't recognize that game. With the stage lights and things? Maybe it's karaoke? Or dancing? A Japanese import? My sources say yes. Checking. That would be Showtime Stage, a collaboration of Nihana Heavy Industry Concern and Hubris Records in Germany. It's won a lot of awards. Huh. I recognize most of these. Whoa! Is that seriously Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze? But the one in the middle with the split screens is new to me. Fist of Discomfort, a hybrid real-time strategy and brawler beat-em-up. It's actually not that new. It's been a staple of the esports scene for the last eight years. 
two genres I was utterly lousy at last time I checked. And over here is an old lady. Um, sorry ma'am, I was just talking to myself and had an overwhelming urge to complete my sentences. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't think she even registered me calling her old. She looks up from her knitting, seated behind the ticket prize redemption desk, and offers a wrinkly smile. Well, hello there. Always nice to meet someone new in the funplex. I don't know if I can do an old lady voice. The what? Francine's Arcade Funplex. <laughs> Didn't you see the sign out front, dear? Well, I chose to knock off the first two words when they got knocked off the building during the storm of 1980. Now it's Jesus. just the funplex, I suppose. <laughs> so, how can I help you, dear? Um, let's do this one. A genie in my phone set up a job interview for me. A magical space fairy or something that lives in my phone told me to come here and find my dream job. Hello! Hello, I'm a magical space fairy, apparently. I half expected her to send me packing. Pretty impulsive of me to just talk about Iris like that, but she took it in stride. My, oh my! Oh, hello! My, my! What they can do with technology these days. I really do marvel at what amazing things young people have in 2020. I can't do old lady, dude. I don't know. Although, I'd simply love to take a sledgehammer to those blasted video game consoles that eat at my bottom line. She said with such a kind-hearted and warm Please smile. Please call me Francine. As in, Francine's Arcade Funplex. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Actually, thinking about it, I suppose we were originally Frederick's Arcade Funplex, named after my dear departed husband. Sadly, he died peacefully in bed some years ago. Wait, hang on. I feel like I should save. Yeah. Ah, I'm... Sorry to hear that. No, don't be. He died doing what he loved. Having intensely physical relations with me. Jesus Christ. What the heck? You can't say that. What? That's information I needed to know. Yes. And you are? Tina Cat, ma'am. Oh my god. Now I feel silly for naming myself that. Very well. We shall retire to the office to conduct your interview. Or shall we retire to the office to conduct your interview? I'd carry on out here, but it is rather noisy, isn't it? Yeah, about that. How do you deal with the constant noise anyway? Oh, eventually you just start, just sort of learned how to filter out all the beeps and boops. It can take weeks to become acclimated, I've found, but in the end, done. She quirks an eyebrow. Well now, that's faster than the others. Not bad. So, shall we see what you're made of, hmm? This way, please. Francine leads, leads me down a back hallway, past public restrooms, and into a door marked employees only. It takes all my restraint not to point out the extraneous apostrophe. Welcome to our little backstage oasis. I'd suggest we do this in Gavin's office, but it's a bit too untidy. I don't blame the boy, he's been so overworked lately. Please have a seat and we'll begin. As quirky as this place and its owner may be, at least I'm confident that I can nail the interview portion of the proceedings. I've interviewed for dozens of jobs and held down three. I know all the standard questions. What are your greatest strengths? What do you see as your weaknesses? Once I've even had to describe how I how to assemble a Lego set to prove my communication skills. Considering I ended up washing dishes, I'm not sure why, but the point is I'm confident, prepared, ready. If you were a dinosaur, what dinosaur would you be? What? If you were a dinosaur, <laughs> what dinosaur would you be? Right. Okay, maybe this wouldn't be a typical job interview after all. No problem. Go with the flow. Let's do this. Um, Pterodactyl, I think. Pterodactyl, soaring through the sky. I've always wanted to be a bird, so... Wait, no. All dinosaurs are basically birds. Let me rephrase. 
I've always wanted to be a flying bird, so pterodactyl. Swooping around, catching updrafts, staying way away from meat eaters. Really? How exciting! Even if, technically speaking, pterodactyls aren't dinosaurs. What's your favorite snack? <laughs> snack? If this was a favorite food question, I have this down easy. It's tacos. Always tacos. But snacks? Hmm. When you have pizza on a bagel. <laughs> pizza bagels. Say pizza bagels. When pizza's on a bagel, you can have hush you. Come now, dear. I don't have all day. After giving it a good thought, well, how could I forget my favorite snack? Hmm. I'm not... I don't think the taco joke is funny. And this sounds delicious, so... An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Uh, if I'm hungry, I need something that's got enough nutrients and proteins to carry me through the rest of the day. That's good. You know how to plan accordingly for any situation. You know what they say. You are what you eat. Next question. Nothing I prepared for has helped me plan for this odd interview. I brace myself for the next one. What assets can you bring to the team during the inevitable zombie apocalypse? <laughs> is this interview for real or is this a dream? As I look into Francine's deadpan expression, I know she's 130% serious. Hmm. Let's do medical. Medical. And hey, no lawyers left to sue for malpractice. Medical. Definitely. In a world without lawyers, I'm sure I could do a reasonable job. But seriously, I did have to take a first aid class when I worked at a previous job. And CPR lessons. That's a great point. Doctors and nurses will all be exposed to assorted patient zeros and will be the first ones eaten. People with any medical knowledge would be high in demand and could be the difference between your party living and dying slowly and painfully. One more thing. Why are you here? The question is so simple and almost actually relevant to career planning that it takes me off guard. I told you, the magical space fairy in my phone sent me here to find a job. You're seeking a job, true. But that doesn't really answer my question, does it? No doubt. You think my interview questions are a bit silly, but I like to think of the Funplex as more than a collection of tasks and people to perform those tasks. Most folks my age opening arcades at that time saw it as just another way to make a quick buck. But, well, I saw it as something else. Something more than a way to make a large pile of quarters. And, I expect, you'll find the others working here see it as something more, too. Everyone has a dream they're chasing, dearie. And for my friends, it lies within the funplex. Now, if all you want is a paycheck, I can provide that. But the last fellow in your position... That's all he wanted. And he didn't last long. So I ask you again. Why are you here? To be honest, I didn't have anything better to do, and I thought it'd be funny. No way I'd say that out loud, though. As strange as this job interview has been, I'm getting a glimmer of hope that there may be something to this. Let's put all jokes aside and actually think this through. I like this one. I'm looking for hope. I haven't had much lately. Oh, I'm becoming a nice person. Yeah. That's good. I think this one is probably the, the one that I'll stick with the most. It's kind of nice that, like, I have it turned off, though, because I feel like I don't want to shoehorn myself into choosing that. I just want to, like, pick the dialogue options kind of, like, naturally. Understand I'm not whining or looking for pity, but uh, my life has been a complete mess for over a decade. In and out of jobs, taking what I can get, settling, compromising. I gave up on hoping for something better a long time ago, but, well, 
The people in my life who are close to me keep encouraging me to try and chase my dreams. That's why I'm here. I'm looking for the answer to your question. But I won't be daydreaming all the time, I promise. In my last job, I was a lifeguard. That takes a lot of focus. I'll be just as attentive in helping your, uh, funplex. That perks her attention. Oh my, a rather serious occupation, that. And an unusual step from such troubled waters to a land of make-believe. You enjoyed this role as lifeguard, I take it? Yes, ma'am. My roommate says she often noticed me smiling after coming home from work. Which makes Francine smile in turn. I can't say I can offer a role with such high stakes, but... You'd be surprised at the many ways one can save a life, even here. Very well. I'm satisfied. Let's get you to work. I breathe easier at that. Probably the weirdest job interview I've ever had, to be sure. And yet, it felt appropriate. Like, it was about far more than just filling a slot in the payroll. Francine leads me back to the arcade floor to introduce me to my duties. Fran it only occurs to me now that I forgot to ask exactly what duties this mystery job I'd ac accepted really involved. Francine gestures to the seat she was occupying previously, a stool behind the prize desk. Oh, how marvelous! Welcome to your new position, Tina. Sitting here, you mean? Sitting here and helping players redeem tickets for valuable prizes. I glance at the wide array of pencil toppers, rubber spiders, and tiny plastic toy cars on display. Well, for prizes at any rate. It's such a relief. I'd really been stretching myself thin lately trying to fill in since the position was vacated. If you don't mind me asking, ma'am, why did the last guy who sat here end up quitting? Something about being so bored out of his mind that he felt like jamming one of those 500 ticket plush dolls down someone's throat. Oh, such a shame. Poor dear. He just wasn't cut out for this line of work. Grandson or no, I have no patience for such nonsense. I'm sorry, the last person to work this desk was your grandson? Anyway, Gavin should be here. Should be by soon. He'll handle paperwork and all of that administrative nonsense. Now, if you don't mind, all this talking's tired me out some. I'll be in the back office if you need me. That's good, because doing her voice is hard. Whew. Okay, then. I adjusted my seating on the semi-comfortable stool, leaning against the desk. Beneath me, a wide array of cheap junk awaited my attention. I could have lost hope then and there that this job would be even slightly more en engaging than the than being a diner dishwasher, but chose to look on the positive side. I'd be helping kids obtain toys that would become nostalgic memories for years to come. Right? Any minute now. No one's coming. Look at this huge penguin. <laughs> I crave the sweet embrace of death. I've been sitting here for two hours now and nobody's walk up to obtain a novelty funplex shot glass or a colored pencil set or a light up yo-yo. Lunchtime's approaching and so far the only people walking in and out of the arcade are a few stray adults who have no interest in cheap friendship bracelets. Thankfully, my first customer of the day arrives before I could start wondering if one of those 500 ticket plushes could really fit down someone's throat. Or maybe not. Nope, just walking right on by me, his head buried in reading some sort of spreadsheet off his tablet. Was he here to play? Doesn't seem like the typical businessman on a break or unwashed and unemployed game aficionado. In fact, he's a snappy dresser. Seems a cool dude. Most guys I know are content to toss on a t-shirt and jeans. Not this guy. Even in an arcade, he's sharp like a linoleum knife. What the fuck is a linoleum knife? Okay. 
In fact, that rather pointed look he's offering me after doubling back is rather linoleum knifey too. Hold on a minute. Who are you exactly? What are you doing behind that desk? Where's Francine? <laughs> this guy doesn't seem like he probably is a fan of quirky jokes. Pleased to meet you, I'm Tina. Hello, I'm Tina Cat, your new hire. I'm looking forward to working with you. He relaxes somewhat on hearing that. Somewhat. Good to hear. Oh. It's about time. I was wondering how long she'd have to work that desk. She's got gusto for an octogenarian and loves working the floor, but sitting here all day handing out toys and dealing with problems wears her down. So, she explained the job to you? Gave you the papers to sign? She said Gavin would handle all that stuff. With a sigh, he rubs his forehead, feeling a headache coming on. <sighs> that would be me. I'm Gavin Cooper. I'm the business manager here at the Funplex. I make sure we manage to keep having a business, rather than a pile of rapidly collapsing fiscal mistakes. <laughs> right, so as you've no doubt guessed, you'll be exchanging tickets for prizes, but that's the least part of your job. There's more to it than that? You're the floor attendant. You attend the floor. What, the carpets? Seriously? The floor. The arcade, the games, the patrons, you're the one running around, putting out fires, and sorting out problems. Technically, you're our, new, our second floor attendant. Ashley will be in later, but we need two, one to roam and one to operate the desk. I do it myself, but I'm typically busy in the back office, making sure this whole thing doesn't fall to bankruptcy. That's why Francine loved filling in. She's a people person. She loves helping out in a pinch. I am not a people person, as you've likely gathered. That's not to say you're alone out there. I'm in your corner, at least. If things go south, you tap me for advice on what to do. You got a phone? Of course. Gavin quickly passes me his business card. He apparently had a stack of them at the ready in his pocket. Go figure. His phone number is listed at the bottom. You ever worked a high-pressure customer service job before? Shoe sales. Smelly socks. You have no idea. Right. Well, you know how to keep your head when a customer doesn't, I hope. But anything goes sideways, you text me. I'm not around, you text Ashley or Naomi. In that order. Who and who? You'll meet them soon enough. I think not. Above all, do not bug Francine. She's practically retired. Let her enjoy that retirement in peace. Comprendo? Relax, I got this. Stress feeds me, makes me strong. I eat stress and, and crap solutions. Don't worry, I can manage the floor while you manage the business just fine. Doubtful. That remains to be seen. The last guy sitting on that stool was a slacker and an idiot. And even though he was family, Francine dropped him like a bad habit. If you stay clear and honest with me, do your work, do it well, we'll get along swimming. I have enough problems keeping this magical arc of hopes and wishes afloat. Please, don't add to my problems. Magical arc of what now? Gavin sighs again, a stress release gesture, but his expression softens somewhat afterwards. I take it Francine told you her theory, that this is more than just a job, more than just an arcade. That's my understanding. <sighs> I'm not into dressing up words. I like to speak plain. If I'm curt, then that's because optimization is a factor of my job. Everybody working here wants to work here. This is where they belong, for one reason or another. Me? I love chaos. I love wrangling chaos specifically. The arcade industry is high risk, high reward. I manage that risk so that they can also find happiness in their lives. Everybody in this business has a dream they're chasing. It's a fragile thing, prone to getting crushed by hard reality. My job is to see to it that never happens. That includes Francine, 
who deserves better in her twilight years than desperately propping up a semi-failing business. This so, guy's really serious. You find some value in this place beyond your salary, and you'll burn out. Trust me. Last guy to sit there burned out hard. Now, can I trust you to mess with our merry misfits? I don't know. I haven't met any of them. Let's just save this one, I think. No problem at all. I'm a model employee. You won't have any issues with me. I'm a solid worker. Gavin nods, satisfied. Oh. I got a little plus one with Gavin. Thank you. I suppose that's a good starting point. We can build from there. Um. Anyway, I need to go prepare your paperwork. Technically, you shouldn't be working until we've crossed the I's and dotted the T's, but... But since I'm already sitting here, you'd rather I stick around? That would be accurate. If you're willing to fudge things a bit and work today anyway, it'd help us out a lot. Now, if you don't mind, Naomi likely could use a hand in the workshop. A good opportunity to introduce yourself as well. Got it. Wait, someone else is here? I haven't seen anyone else. Yeah, that sounds like Naomi. Her workshop's through that door there, the one next to the UFO catcher, the crane game, to use layman's terms. Satisfied for now, Gavin heads in the back, presumably to the office to go crunch some numbers. If Francine's really taking a nap back there, hopefully he's going to crunch quietly. My first co-worker ended up being, ended up slightly less cool of a guy than I thought he'd be, but he's not a jerk, definitely. I get where he's coming from. Plus, I've known really blunt people before. It's easy to mistake them for jerks, especially at first glance. I figure I can give this guy an honest chance. Anyway, I should go meet my next co-worker, this Naomi that he mentioned. Although, I could swear Francine and I were the only ones here until now. A double door, also marked employees only, also with an apostrophe, leads from the arcade's floor to what feels like an industrial area of some sort. I turn the handle and step inside. In the little room tucked away behind the back offices and the funplex front, I find what is very likely this Naomi spoken of only in myths and legends. A girl about my age, but certainly not my height, is tinkering away on what looks like an old tube-style monitor. Huh, I didn't realize they had so many circuits. She doesn't notice me when I come in, too busy soldering a, a capacitor into place. The lingering smell of melting metals fills the air of the poorly ventilated workshop. Uh, excuse me. For lack of a better way to interrupt her. I was worried no matter what I did, she might, I don't know, burn her fingers or jump so high she hit the ceiling or something. Fortunately, the shock's not quite that intense. Ah! She's cute! Oh. Look at her! Ah! Oh! Um, hello? Hey, uh, you know this room is for employees only. She said with no apostrophe. Are, are you lost? Do, do you need something? I'm Tina Cat. I'm the new floor attendant starting today. <gasps> Oh! Hi! <laughs> I didn't realize Francine already found someone. I guess I forgot to check my text. <laughs> uh, oh, whoops! <laughs> she spares a glance at her phone on the nearby workbench, where a huge stack of green notification ma messages lie in wait. <laughs> um. One thought comes to mind on actually seeing her. No wonder I didn't notice her until now. She was totally focused on the task at hand. The room is right at the heart of the building, but totally isolated. With the heavy doors closed behind me, I can barely hear the arcade. Considering how completely and utterly dedicated she was to that monitor, not even noticing me, I guess that's also why. But what I first notice is her smile. Even when squinting to see the last, see the tiny components of the on that circuit board, even when laser focused, she was smiling happily. Anyway. I'm Naomi Fairchild, the Funplex is Techie! Hi! <laughs> Pleased to meet you. I was expecting Gavin, though. He usually checks up on me about now. He's busy doing strange things with numbers. Ugh. Yeah, that sounds like Gavin. I take it he sent you along to help? Great! Uh, give me a hand with this monitor. It's really heavy, and I'm still paranoid about dropping it after what happened last time. Really? What happened last oh, time? Oh, well, I, I dropped it. Oh, right. 
She helps me lift the large cathode ray tube, slotting in, slotting the heavy metal framework into place within the exposed guts of the nearby arcade cabinet. Once done, she starts hooking wires back up to other wires. There's a surprising number of green circuit boards in that largely hollow wooden, wooden shell. This is the first time I've seen inside one of these things. It's weird. Lots of empty space, a couple large slabs of circuits, and that beefy monitor. Why is it so empty in there? Why is it so empty in there? Seems inefficient. Couldn't you pack more games into the arcade if it was more compact? Not really. It's more about the footprint on the floor than the vertical height. Naomi keeps working, using a pocket multimeter to check various connections as she speaks. Let me explain. I mean, computer American... Oh, c compare American and Japanese cabinets. Ours are designed for standing players, so they have to be upright even if that means an empty base. Japanese candy cabs are shorter, so you play sitting down, but I prefer the American style. Ours have more room for art. She closes up the rear access panel, closing it with one of the many keys and on the key ring at her side, then steps back to admire her handiwork. There's genuine joy in that smile, not just at a job well done, but at looking at the whole thing like it's a fine sculpture. So beautiful. Oh, I love the classic Midway style. Look at those sharp angles, the side art decals, the bold font on the marquee, the bezel artwork, the what on the what and the what artwork? With a sigh, Naomi points out key features to me. The strip across the top with the game's title, that's the marquee. The artwork that wraps around the monitor, that's the bezel. I mean, you see it too, right? How beautiful and cohesive it all is, working in harmony to give this game its own unique feel, its own experience. As for me, well... No, I like that. I agree. I agree, it's beautiful in its own way. The way she stares lovingly at this, well, honestly, it's a box of wood and circuits and vacuum tubes and stuff. I think I understand. It was made to be one whole thing. The art, the style, and of course the game itself, all of it, part of the same experience. Everything about this game is the game. If you run it in an emulator or in a game console instead, it's made lesser. Yeah, I guess I can see it. It's beautiful in its own way. Oh, good! Naomi lights, light, lights up with joy like a pinball machine, all twinkly and shiny. Woohoo! Finally! So few people really understand the beauty of a classic arcade game. Having someone I can talk to about this stuff is going to be great. Especially with that jerk Gavin running in the numbers. Gavin? What's wrong with Gavin? Uh, I, I don't know. Okay, well, uh, don't get me wrong. I can get along with him, generally. But this whole attitude just... Ugh. Ugh. All he really cares about is money. He keeps the arcade running, yeah. But I just know if he had it his way, he'd gut the whole place. If anybody's gonna ruin the funplex, it's him. Mark my words, it's inevitable. That doesn't sound right. He seemed easy enough to get along with, and what's more, Gavin gave me that whole speech about protecting their dreams. This looks like a pretty sore point here, a long-standing argument with that new gal really shouldn't get involved with. That the new gal really shouldn't get involved with. And yet, I'm involved, aren't I? I have to work with both Naomi and Gavin, so I'm not sure I should prod at it. But I kind of want to know, too. Um... Hmm... Let's clear the air and find out more. I get this is touchy, but if I'm going to work here, I think we should all be honest with each other. No gossiping. So I gotta know, why do you think Gavin wants to destroy the arcade? He buys into Francine's idea that this place is for dreams. He says he does. But he's willing to sacrifice way too much just to keep the whole thing afloat. Road to hell, best intentions, etc. If he had his way, this place would be like Deco's palace. Nothing but ticket games and prize catchers. He thinks actual video games are too expensive. A waste of floor space. I bet he'd remove them all if he had his way. I just don't trust him. I don't trust him to do the right thing. But 
That's my problem, not yours. Sorry to drop gossip on your head like this. Thanks for hearing me out anyway. Right. Let's get back to work, shall we? Now, for the less fun part. You seem a strong, strapping kind of gal. Well, a strong gal at least. Well, you're a gal. That's enough. I'm semi-insulted then. Okay, let's get to it. Right, a little to the left now. My left, my left. You're right. Careful. Now forward. Right. Correct, I mean, not turn to the right. Keep it coming, keep it coming, and there. Carefully, carefully, tip it into place. Victory! I gently eased the rolling dolly forward, the giant wooden box slotting into place again alongside his neighbors. The two-wheeled dolly makes it easier, but hardly easy, especially with Naomi fretting over her baby getting scratched, or worse, falling over. But with the work done, she's all smiles again. Yeah! Okay, glad to be done with that one. I swear I've been working on that monitor for ages. Those tubes are finicky as heck, and I'm t still not totally satisfied with the flyback, but... Thanks for helping me out, Tina. I think you're gonna do just great here. Happy to... Uh... Oh, right. Stomach growling. Food required. Except... I wasn't expecting to actually be working today. I forgot to pack a lunch. When you have pizza on a bagel. <laughs> now, I'm just talking here, but if you had pizza on a bagel... Shh! Hey, so any good restaurants in walking distance? I think that bookstore next door sells donuts and stuff, but... Oh, um, no, not really, unfortunately. I mean... There's a cheapo wub sub sandwich place, but even if the, that stuff is super tasty, you don't want to go there. You need to eat healthy. Hey, I know. Wait right here. And she's off, scurrying back to her hidey hole. And she's back, scurrying back from her hole. Scurrying from her hidey hole. Lunch time. Here you go. She presses a box lunch into my hands. It's a bento box. I learned how to make them from my mom, who learned from her mom back when they lived in Japan. Rice and pickles and all sorts of good healthy things. Wait, you're giving me your lunch? Sure, why not? And yet, when I first walked in as a stranger, she looked super uncomfortable with me. That escalated quickly. Uh, what'll you have for lunch then? Oh, I can just get some nachos from the vending machine or hit the whole story next door. I've got a book delivery to pick up anyway. But you said eating healthy was important. See ya! See you after lunch! I can't help but think she was just looking for an excuse to go get some junk food instead. I say Naomi definitely fits in with Francine's ideals for this arcade. She's got a love for these games and it shows. And giving me her lunch? Me? A total stranger? That's a kindness I don't know if I deserve, but I appreciate it all the same. So. A bento box. I've only seen these in anime. It's cute, and hopefully has plenty of calories too. Armed with a box of health food, I retire to the employee lounge to get my munch on. <sighs> Alright. This is starting to hurt my voice, so... I might have to take a break. Also, I've been streaming for about an hour now, and that feels like a pretty good stopping place. Um, I kind of was hoping to go through like an entire work day, but I don't know if my voice will make it all the way. So we'll probably just call it here. Whew. Streaming is hard, y'all. I mean, it's about the same as when I record videos. But uh, yeah, I couldn't just stop, I guess, is the main thing if I wanted to. But um, thank you for watching. Um, I will do my best to figure out how to upload this to YouTube so that it ends up making it over there because I don't really have any following over here on Twitch so far, but uh, YouTube is where it's mainly at. You can find me on YouTube at Cats on Parade, and there's no spaces. And don't do the numbers. I had to do the numbers for Twitch because someone already had my username, but 
For YouTube, don't do the numbers. I'll find a way to put the link, I think, somewhere. I'm still new to the Twitch thing, so. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching my stream. I really appreciated you all. And I will see you next time. Bye.